Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and this is your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will go through each topic on the ASCP lecture list. In today's video, we're addressing the final segment of hemorrhagic disorders and laboratory assessment. Special thanks to our friend Bishoy Isam and all others who reached out to us via our Facebook page, reminding us about this part. Without further ado, let's explore the realm of hemophilia A, B, and C. Hemophilia A, Factor 8 Deficiency Hemophilia A is a congenital disorder characterized by deficiencies in specific blood clotting factors, resulting in soft tissue bleeding. It's the second most prevalent congenital bleeding disorder, affecting 1 in 10,000 individuals. Now, let's break it down further. Let's talk about Factor 8, the key player in hemophilia A. This protein, with a whopping 285,000 Dalton structure, is composed of two chains translated from the X chromosome. Picture it as the maestro in the coagulation cascade orchestra. During the coagulation cascade, thrombin activation cleaves factor 8, releasing a large polypeptide. The remaining calcium-dependent heterodimer then detaches to bind phospholipid and factor 9A, forming the 8A-9A complex, also known as the 10A's complex. This complex is crucial for efficient thrombin production. Impact of factor 8 deficiency, now, what happens when factor 8 is in short supply? Well, deficiency in factor 8 slows down the coagulation pathway, leading to impaired thrombin production and, consequently, an increased risk of hemorrhage. It's like the conductor missing in our orchestra, affecting the harmony of blood clotting. In vitro stability, factor 8, like factor 5, is labeled and degrades at about 5% per hour at room temperature in laboratory conditions. Understanding its stability is crucial for proper diagnosis and treatment. Now, let's dive into the genetics. The factor 8 gene, spanning 186 KB on the X chromosome, can experience various mutations, deletions, stop codons, and missense mutations. Most result in quantitative disorders, aligning coagulant activity in antigen concentration. In rare cases, we see qualitative or structural abnormalities known as cross-reacting material positive disorders. Males with a factor 8 gene mutation on their single X chromosome experience anatomic bleeding. Carrier females, with one affected X chromosome, do not manifest anatomic bleeding. When a carrier female has children with an unaffected male, the chances are intriguing. Approximately 30% of newly diagnosed cases result from spontaneous mutations in individuals without a family history of hemophilia A. In rare instances, females may exhibit symptoms due to various factors like true homozygosity or double heterozygosity. Now, we're continuing our exploration of hemophilia A, delving into its clinical manifestations and how this condition is diagnosed. So, let's jump right in. Clinical Manifestations, Hemophilia A, with its factor 8 deficiency, presents a range of clinical manifestations that can significantly impact an individual's life. 1. Anatomic Bleeds Hemophilia A causes bleeding into deep muscles and joints, hematoma formation, oozing from wounds after trauma or surgery, and even bleeding into critical areas like the central nervous system, peritoneum, gastrointestinal tract, and kidneys. 2. Joint Bleeds, Hemarthrosis Acute joint bleeds are intensely painful, leading to temporary immobilization. Chronic joint bleeds cause inflammation and can result in permanent loss of mobility. 3. Muscle bleeds. Bleeding into muscles may cause nerve compression injuries, initially resulting in temporary disability and potentially leading to lasting impairments. 4. Cranial bleeds. Hemorrhages in a cranial region cause severe and enduring neurologic symptoms, including memory loss, paralysis, seizures, and coma. In some cases, cranial bleeds can be rapidly fatal. 5. Onset and Triggers Bleeding can commence immediately after a triggering event or may manifest several hours later, with some instances appearing to be spontaneous. Now, let's discuss how hemophilia A is diagnosed, a crucial step in managing and treating the condition. 1. Initial Laboratory Testing The diagnosis often begins with laboratory testing, especially if there's a family history of hemophilia. Abnormal bleeding in the neonatal period or other signs like easy bruising, post-circumcision bleeding, or intracranial bleeding raise suspicion for hemophilia. 2. Timing of Diagnosis Severe hemophilia is typically diagnosed within the first year of life, while milder cases may not become apparent until later in childhood, adolescence, or adulthood, often triggered by trauma or surgery. 3. Challenges in Coagulopathy Testing 
testing in newborns is challenging due to the need for a small, unhemolyzed specimen and low levels of certain coagulation factors. However, factor 8 activity assays, with levels similar to those in adults, enable accurate hemophilia A diagnosis. And finally, understanding the severity of hemophilia A is crucial for tailoring effective treatments. Severe. Activity levels less than 1% result in spontaneous or exaggerated bleeding in the neonatal period. Moderate. Activity levels of 1% to 5% lead to moderate hemophilia, often diagnosed in early childhood. Mild. Activity levels of 5% to 30% characterize mild hemophilia, with hemorrhage typically following significant trauma, surgery, or dental extractions. Patients may experience extended periods without symptoms. Hemophilia A Complications 1. Physical Consequences Frequent bleeding episodes in hemophilia A lead to debilitating musculoskeletal lesions and progressive deformities, impacting the daily lives of individuals. Intracranial hemorrhages can result in lasting neurological deficiencies, affecting both cognitive and physical functions. 2. Challenges of Chronic Disease Chronic hemophilia often leads to limited productivity, affecting daily activities and life. Living with hemophilia may contribute to low self-esteem due to the persistent challenges associated with the condition. The chronic nature of hemophilia can also result in financial strain, contributing to poverty in affected individuals. Individuals may develop dependencies on drugs as a coping mechanism for the demands and challenges posed by hemophilia. Depression is a common problem, with the chronic condition and its consequences affecting the mental well-being of individuals. 3. Historical Complications before the introduction of sterilized and recombinant factor concentrates, repeated exposure to blood products often resulted in chronic hepatitis. Tragically, a significant portion of hemophiliacs treated before 1984 contracted HIV or succumbed to AIDS, highlighting historical challenges related to blood product safety. Hemophilia A Laboratory Diagnosis 1. Initiating Laboratory Testing Before laboratory testing, the physician records the patient's history of hemorrhagic symptoms. The laboratory workup for suspected congenital single coagulation factor deficiency begins with PT, PTT, and thrombin time. 2. Carrier Detection Approximately 90% of female carriers are identified by measuring the ratio of factor 8 activity to VWF, AG value, 8, VWF. Using a ratio normalizes for physiologic variables affecting factor 8 activity and VWF, AG assays. A reference interval for the 8 VWF ratio is established using plasmas from at least 30 women without factor 8 deficiency. If carrier status is suspected and the 8 VWF ratio is beyond the lower limit, genetic testing may be necessary to detect associated polymorphisms. Hemophilia A treatment, exploring on demand and prophylactic strategies, along with the complexities of addressing inhibitors. Let's unravel the details. The primary goal of on-demand treatment in hemophilia A is to elevate factor 8 activity to hemostatic levels, initiated when a bleeding episode occurs, is suspected, or is anticipated, especially before a surgical procedure. The target activity level, usually below 75%, is determined based on the nature of the bleeding and the type of procedure, and it's crucial to maintain this level until the threat or bleeding episode is resolved. Swiftly reaching the target factor level is crucial for minimizing pain, inflammation, and nerve damage in cases of bleeds into soft tissue or body cavities. Due to the 8-12 to 12 hour half-life of factor 8, twice-a-day infusions are necessary. Abundant recombinant factor 8 concentrate allows many hemophilic patients to adopt a prophylactic approach, maintaining a steady dosage to keep factor 8 activity at hemostatic levels. Prophylactic treatment, although initially more costly, proves resource efficient by preventing the adverse effects of recurrent hemorrhages and their long-term consequences. Desmopressin acetate Some patients experience an increase in factor 8 activity with desmopressin acetate alone or combined with antifibrinolytics like EACA or TXA. Factor 8 concentrates High-purity factor 8 concentrates are produced using recombinant DNA technology or derived from human plasma with factor 8-specific monoclonal antibodies and column separation. Dosage calculations are based on the definition of a unit of factor 8 activity, equivalent to the mean amount present in 1 milliliter of normal plasma, 100% activity. Continuous monitoring and close clinical observation are crucial. Alloantibody inhibitors 
Alloantibody inhibitors of factor VIII develop in response to treatment in approximately 30% of patients with severe hemophilia and 3% of those with moderate hemophilia. Inhibitor detection. The initial step involves a factor VIII assay. If the factor VIII activity surpasses 30%, no inhibitor is likely present. When factor VIII activity is below 30%, mixing studies are conducted. The patient's plasma is mixed with normal plasma, and the PTT of the mixture is assessed. If an inhibitor is present, the mixture's PTT remains prolonged, indicating inhibitor presence. A Bethesda assay quantitates the inhibitor. It involves mixing normal plasma with increasing dilutions of patient plasma, and the titer is expressed in Bethesda units. Treatment planning. Personalized treatment plans. Hemophilia patients with inhibitors require personalized treatment plans to control bleeding episodes. Activated prothrombin complex concentrate, FIBA, and additional therapy may be necessary to reduce inhibitor titers. Alternatives Some patients may not benefit from factor VIII concentrates and are treated with activated prothrombin complex concentrate, FIBA, along with steroid or immunomodulation therapy. Novo 7 bypasses the physiologic factor VIII requirement by promoting thrombin formation through the tissue factor pathway. Exploring hemophilia B and C, causes, diagnosis, and treatment approaches. Hemophilia B, factor IX deficiency. Hemophilia B, also known as Christmas disease, accounts for approximately 14% of hemophilia cases in the United States, with a prevalence in India nearly equivalent to hemophilia A. It results from a deficiency of factor IX, a vitamin K-dependent serine protease. Factor IX serves as a substrate for factors Xia and VIIA, ultimately reducing thrombin production and causing soft tissue bleeding akin to hemophilia A. Hemophilia B is a sex-linked disorder with marked genetic heterogeneity, involving various mutations leading to a spectrum of bleeding severity. Determining carrier status in females is challenging due to the multitude of factor IX mutations and the absence of a linked molecule like VWF for normalization. Diagnosis involves laboratory testing, where PTT is typically prolonged while PT remains normal. A factor IX assay should be performed if clinical symptoms suggest hemophilia B, even if PTT falls within the reference range. Recombinant or column-purified plasma-derived factor IX concentrates are utilized for treatment. Dosage calculation mirrors that of factor VIII concentrates in hemophilia A and VWD, with subsequent doses adjusted based on factor assays confirming target levels. Inhibitors to factor IX emerge in only 3% of hemophilia B patients. Detection involves the Bethesda assay, where anti-factor IX alloantibodies are avidly reactive with factor IX. Hemophilia C, factor XI deficiency. Factor XI deficiency manifests as an autosomal dominant hemophilia, characterized by mild to moderate bleeding symptoms. While over half of the cases are identified in Ashkenazi Jews, individuals from any ethnic background may experience this condition. The frequency and severity of bleeding episodes do not exhibit a correlation with factor XI levels, distinguishing it from other forms of hemophilia. Once diagnosed, laboratory monitoring of treatment becomes less relevant, as bleeding characteristics are not consistently tied to factor XI levels. Hemophilia C is managed through frequent plasma infusions during periods of hemostatic challenge, effectively addressing bleeding episodes. Characteristic indicators include a prolonged PTT, partial thromboplastin time, and a normal PT, prothrombin time. Stay up to date with our latest videos by hitting that subscribe button and activating notifications. Be the first to know when we release new and exciting content. Don't keep all this valuable information to yourself. Share this video with your friends who might find it interesting and beneficial. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Until next time, take care and goodbye.